Hello, world family. I've been talking to you for many, many years now. I've changed a lot over these years, as you have seen. Today is very hard. Do you ever give just an excellent vibe and not receive the excellent energy back? You understand that that can not only be people, but that can be the Heavenly Father. See, I'm here to tell you, frustration is extremely high within my soul. I've worked on the body for many years. See, I know things about the cell of the body and how to feed the cell of the body. See, I had sarcoidosis a long time ago. And it took my breath. It was really, it was just the devil trying to kill me one more time. See, the energy of dark energy can affect you and your physical body. You sometimes see it on earth. You see people die of horrible deaths. And what you have to understand is it's the devil ravaging their soul, ravaging to take their life from them. But more importantly, their heart from the Lord. So we all think suffering is a horrible thing. It is, it's evil. It's ripping at the soul. The Father can carry you through it. You have to kind of understand that you have to have a will. So your free will can be within your own mind to do the very best thing for yourself. See, so I had sarcoidosis when I was very young. I was very depressed about life. As you can imagine, I've been tortured by the devil for 2,000 years. It takes a toll. Being Mary Magdalene and having that hidden from me was very hard. See, in this life, Father made me a Scorpio, as I've told you. The problem is, I believe in quite excellent energy, and I believe that I was a master at certain things. See, I had a spiritual contract on this earth when I was young. I was very excited about it. I enjoyed the person that I was going to be doing the contract with. What I didn't expect was some of the reaction out of the contract. See, the contract was everything in your life. When I mean everything, I mean everything. If you want a job, the link of how to get that job and what searches came up on your phone to get a job and what person was on the other line to receive your information was the link. It goes that detailed in your life. Life is not random. It does not just happen. It only happens when Father says. See, this contract was massive details about safety and security. When I was in this contract, they did not want to do the side of the contract they were upset and I said fine I'll do it I asked father that I can do the whole contract if he would give me the body so I worked on the body see I knew how to work on the body previous years I had sarcoidosis and father gave me someone that taught me about the cell but it was like a signature sprung up inside of me knowledge but how to feed the cell and it feeds the body. So I juiced every day. I did natural herbs and natural foods and did juicing every day. I don't mean the bad kind, I mean the good kind. And I took certain foods that would feed my cell to heal me of sarcoidosis. And I also took something that the naturalist practitioner gave me, it was called, it was a biobine, it was concentrated carrots as well, very, very high doses, and it would heal my lung, but I took the necessary steps to pull myself out of that sickness. See, many masters will tell you that what you think about, you attract. It also goes a lot deeper than just what you think. See, I thought that I can do the entire contract. 
which I did. But I thought that Father would give me the body so that I could look pristine in front of you. The crazy thing is, Father told me no. So I did it again. I was like, okay. I've had Father say no to me before. I was like, okay. I'll try again. I tried the body four times with pristine energy. Exercise like you can't imagine. Do you know that the way I look, I can plank with 95 pounds on my back for a full minute and shake the entire time. That's how strong my soul and my core is. I can put 95 pounds of weight, those big round circular weights you see in a gym, they can stack up on my back for 95 pounds and I can plank for a full minute. And Father still told me no to the body. You see how heavy I am. I'm very heavy. I have fought sicknesses and pulled myself out of them because Father says I'm a healer and I needed to heal myself. But see, I knew how to do that through the cell of the body. And I actually thought that Father would allow me to do that and look pristine. See, I wanted to look fit because it's eternity's body. And I've had this argument with someone else that's in a contract that Father loves you just as you are. It's a constant argument we have going back and forth. And I tell her all the time, your body is not meant to be heavy. That's not shallow. That's deep. That means you cherish and honor the body so much that you want it physically fit for you. Meaning you can do anything. See, if you're heavy, your knees are weak. If you're heavy, your heart is weak. If you're heavy, your mind is heavy. Physical fitness is the key. Many people want to say sometimes shallow. Some people can be very shallow when they look good. <laughs> That's the human race. Because they're letting their ego take over. But see, Father told me that I had to work on my inner energy. And I was like, why? Like, I, I'm like you. I ask Father why all the time. He, he'll say no to me, and I'm like, what? <laughs> You're unlimited. What does it matter? You're unlimited be. You can do anything you want. So, he's made me an instrument of his. See, I've had beautiful past lives of music that you guys know, that I'm aware of. But I'm not allowed in this life to build my music. I'm not allowed to have an autistic flair that I love. See, I've had these beautiful paintings in my house. My ex owns my house. And he painted over them. It broke my heart. But Father said, no. I'm not allowed certain things in this life. See, I've had very heavy issues with memory. I get ripped and stolen from the devil all the time. People some say it's a sickness. It's where all sickness comes from. The devil tears you apart. And you have to fight it. Many people will fight a sickness for a long time and give up. And they'll go to heaven. Many people fight it and never give up. And they keep staying on the earth until Father sends them home. That's how it goes. You have to have the will to fight and never give up. Do you understand that even as heavy as I am, my energy is heavy. My mind was tortured all morning long of dark images of famine across the earth. See, an image for you might be something tragic in your life. For me, it's the tragedies across the earth. The devil has tried to torment me so much that he is winning and God is not because we see it on earth. But what you don't understand is that Father is a spirit God. He's in control of the physical. There's a story 
in the Bible a long time ago that a tyrant king wanted to destroy two people that did not want to worship an idol. They wanted to worship the heavenly Jehovah and the heavenly Lord. And they threw him, threw these individuals into a fire, into a furnace. You know the story. The sad part is, the Lord walked them through that fire and came out. He was in the fire with them. See, on earth, that goes on. When you see massive famine, Father is walking with them through the famine. When you see the famine, you see the suffering of that child. You see the suffering of that person. Father tells you. He lets them go hungry. But he feeds them in a way you cannot. But here's what I'm here to tell you. Your soul can make a difference in this life. You have many lives. But each life builds yourself to eternity. Your soul works matter. Many people will say, no, it doesn't, because they can't see it. Someone will do something bad, murder, rape, politics, anything that is destructive, war. But we're all in spiritual war. See, we're all in that spiritual war. You can escape it. You can find joy in moments that are hard. I'll give you an example. I'm a caregiver of as all as you know. I had a gentleman that's going through a hard time. He's been very depressed his whole life. His family has told me he's been very depressed and angry. And he was going on and on about how the Lord is awful and doesn't love him and did this to him. Because his wife now has Alzheimer's. And he's angry and furious and hates the Lord right now. And I told him, you missed an opportunity for joy. He made pizza for us. He sat there and made pizza for all of us, angry as hell, mad at his wife for having the sickness, mad at the Lord for doing it, mad that he had to give up his house, of the whole house he's lived in his whole life. And I said to him, you forgot that Father gave you the house your whole life. You can't abandon the Lord just when something gets hard. You had a good life. And he said to me, I can feel any way I want. I said, you don't have the right to feel any way you want. You have the right to feel. And he looked at me and he was like, it shocked him. And I said to him, you missed an opportunity. You could have just sat here with us and enjoyed the pizza with your wife. She was laughing, she was enjoying herself. And you were furious. And you yelled at the dog and you were upset and you walked away and you said, I don't like people. I said, that's you, that's not the Lord, that's you. That's you being angry at the situation when you could have found joy in the situation. You could have spent time with her before she passes on this earth, which she is going to do because she has Alzheimer's. And I told them straight up, there are many things you can do for Alzheimer's that help the mind settle. Turkey tail, reishi, more importantly, lion's mane. It will calm your mind a great deal and give you the cognitive ability back. Here's the thing. He was going on and on and on. Started attacking me, started attacking everyone, attacking his wife, and he said the most horrible thing to his wife. And I told him to stop. I said, you're just angry. You do realize it's your anger. It's not the Lord. The Lord's not angry at you. The Lord's not doing this to you. This is darkness trying to steal your wife away from you and it's working because you're not honoring her or yourself. I sat and talked to him for a while. I left it very pleasantly. I did not tear him apart, but he was very mean was very angry, very mean, and was very sarcastic to say, yeah, the Lord's blessed me. 
He's blessed me with this house. He's blessed me with my wife. He was being arrogant. He was blasphemy, as some people would say. He was. But do you know, even in those moments, I was there in front of him, which the Lord does, and rose him up to something in his heart. I said, do you realize the people in your care who you're hurting, that's not the Lord, that's you. You're hurting the people in your care. Now, everybody on earth needs to understand humanity. People that hurt, hurt people. If you hurt, it's your job, nobody else's, no excuses, no whining. If you're hurt, it's your job to fix it in your own soul. You can't find some outer means to do it. You have to exercise. You have to get the aggression out. You have to work on your own soul. Not somebody else. You can't go blaming somebody else. You can't blame the Lord for what's happening to you. Father can walk you through a furnace and keep you safe. Your soul is the most important thing to him. Now, if the devil can do that to his wife and steal him from the law, which he's trying to do, are you going to allow it? Are you going to stick up for what's right and tell him the Lord can bring him through that as well as his wife? But he did not want to find joy in the very moment that God gave him. God gave him a beautiful pizza that he created and his wife was enjoying it and all he had to do was have a peace with her and he would not do it. See, that's humanity. In the darkest days of your life, you find joy and you throw it in the devil's face. And I guarantee you, guarantee you, being Mary Magdalene on this earth for 2,000 years, I can guarantee you the devil will tremble because I've seen him do it. See, I've watched the devil tear me apart at night. And the very next morning, I sat outside in a beautiful backyard of my own, feeling God, feeling the Lord. And the devil walked right up to me and he said, you're going down. I said, really? I'm scared, aren't I? I'm really scared of you, Dill. You can turn my life apart. You can make me suffer. You can make me see family. You can make me hurt all you want. I said, okay, sure. You got that power, don't you? I've seen it disappear out of your hands. See, I've seen a memory that he ripped that was precious to me out of my mind. It showed me in his hands. This is what Mary Magdalene's sight is about. I can see the devil straight up. This is where spirit is real, people. Spirit is very real. It's not some idea in your mind. You are your mind. He literally stole the memory. Many days later, I told him it did not matter my father holds my memories. That's what I told the devil. What the Lord told me, Jehovah in the sky. One day, the devil came to boast about stealing the memory, to torment my mind and my heart. I watched the memory go like this. Disappear out of the devil's hands. Anger rose in the devil. Rose. Looked straight to the sky because he could see the father. He looked straight up into the sky. Anger rose in him. I just looked at him and said, really? Yeah. You're in control of the world. Show you. Good job. Yeah, I was arrogant. You know what? Because see, here's the thing. E-G-O. Edging God out. That's what he does to you. When you use your ego at others. But when you use your ego at him. It edges God out. 